ir vakar tu pamanīji, ka pēc dzimšanas dienas raidījuma bija visādi dzimšanas dienas pārteigumi. Es jā, es pamanīju, Twitterī tur bija. Un bija jau viens, viens un... bija saistīts ar, ar Svētā Patrika dienu, otrs bija saistīts ar Edi Izārdu. Un, jā, un ar biļetēm. Ar Edi Izārdu biļetēm tas joks ir saistīts vēl joprojām. Mēs turpinām svinēt brokastu show dzimšanas dienu vēl līdz pulksteni pieciem pēc pusdienā. Līdz pieciem pēc pusdienā doļoties uz biļešu servis.lv un nāk, uz nākamās otradienas kongresa namā gaidāmo Edi Izārda izrāda force majeure pērkot biļetes, ievadot tur tādu vietu, kur var ievadīt Es vienkārši to sauc par kodu, tas nav ne dāvanu kodu. Jā, tas ir ne. kodu. Vienkārši ievadot kodu, ja tu ieraksti radio 101, uh, vienkārši, ja tu ieraksti radio 101, uh, 101 ar cipariem, radio 101, tad uh, ikvienai biļetē, kur tu pērc, bet tas ir tikai līdz pulksteni 17. šodien, ikvienai biļetē, kur tu pērc uz Edi Izārda šovu, ir dabonam piecu latu atlaides. To mēs esam šādu dzimšanas dienas dāvanu jums no mums. Mēs esam saorganizējuši kopā ar Lui, kurš pārstāv Comedy Politics. Good morning, Lui! Hi, Toms! How you doing, man? Oh, my God! You're, you have such a good radio it's voice. It's a beautiful day, man! Look at this outside. I don't care it's minus 16. It's sunny! Uh, Lui dzīvo Igaunijā, bet uh, ordināli, you're from New Zealand. No, Australia, dude. Say, ah, sorry, 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 you're from Estonia, are you, Toms? Uh, no, thank you, thank you very much. Usually they say Lithuania. Okay, all right. Usually it's all about Lithuania. No, you look less smarter than that, it's all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. You don't have those, that accent that usually New Zealanders... Oh, right. Have. Fush and Chops, New Zealand accent. Ka- hey, bro. Kaways. Kaways, bro. Hey, bro. Hey, no worries, hey. <laughs> okay, you have, you, you have brought a very, very special guest this morning to Radio 101 studio. Introduce her. Okay, we have Sarah Townsend with us. And Sarah is the uh, director of the Believe, the Eddie Izzard story, a doc- like the documentary about Eddie Izzard's life. So, uh, 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 the, doc- the documentary. The only documentary. <laughs> That's right. Still exactly. makes it the best one. <laughs> good morning, Sarah, and welcome to Radio 101. How are you? I'm good. Cold? Oh my God, it's minus 16. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, I will do a short introduction in Latvian as well. I thought that the Radio Simtens studio Comedy Baltics part of us said, atvedz ciemo Sāru Taunsendu, režisoru, kur ir uh, radījusi filmu par uh, Edi Izardu, par komiķu, kurš nākam otrdien viesosies Rīgā. Believe the Edi Izardu story, vienīgais seans šovakar pulksteni 8. vakarā pieejams kinoteatrī, notiks kinoteatrī Splendid Palace, un uh, Sāru pat arī teiks uh, ievadvārdus, un viņai būs iespēja uzdot jautājums. So, so Sāra, uh, the first question, straight, straight and direct question, uh, how does it feel to, to be uh, the femme fatale of Edi Izardu? The femme fatale. I'm not quite sure what that means. I'm. I'm <laughs> I directed the movie, <laughs> and I work with Eddie. Yes. Um, well, making the film was quite a challenge. That was really fun. Um, it took a long time, but I'm very pleased with the result because it sort of it gives you a part of history of not only Eddie as an unusual character, but also. Um, just a, a lot of comedy, you get a lot of excerpts, you get a lot of clips, and at the end of the day I think you get a bigger message, which is that you can do anything if you believe in yourself. Okay. And you keep going, despite all the setbacks. Oh, you know Eddie for a long time? I yeah, believe. years ago we worked together um, when he was just starting out, and I was just starting out. So yeah, that's how I knew all the early stuff. And uh, I was always a director. Um, but eventually I decided I wanted to get into film instead of theatre, and this seemed to be, you know, they always say, with a whole new rebirth of, of uh, film for all people, um, they say, you know, write about something you know. So that was something I knew. And this started out as a small thing, and then suddenly it expanded and expanded. And then in the end, it actually, uh, it was um, nominated for an Emmy in the, in the States. So who knew that was going to happen? That was a total surprise. Uh-huh. Paint us a picture about uh, those times when you first met Eddie. Oh, um, when was it and, and how was it? It was um, late 80s, early 90s. Um, I was working in Edinburgh and he was working in Edinburgh. I was running a venue and he was and I was directing theatre and he was starting out doing his very first show for Edinburgh Festival, okay. which is you know where lots of stand-ups do their very first attempt at actually getting seen by an international crowd. And usually there's like three people in the audience and a cat and that's it. Um, but he just kept on going and going and going and going and that um that kind of determination just persisted throughout his whole life and so you see it now you know he's still out doing just places nobody else will do he's trying to sort of spread the gospel of self-belief and comedy and uh, lots of laughs uh, stand-up comedy is a pretty new thing here in latvia and now uh, eddie is i believe uh, the, the second superstar 
Yes, um, Dylan Moran came uh, yeah, last year. That was uh, back in October, I believe. I think so. You probably I, got a better memory than I, me. Yeah, at the start of the o- October, and uh, and yeah, and Ed, Eddie's going to play his first show uh, next Tuesday. Well, uh, can you compare Eddie to other guys that are doing the same thing right now in the world? Why Eddie is so special? I think it's because Eddie's mm. always had, um, and I think you see this in the documentary very much. This idea that you can bring anything to anyone, you can make anyone laugh. It's not about language. It's not about whether you have a history of stand-up in your country it's not about what language you speak it's not about any of that it's about communication between uh, human beings which is something that I think a lot of us share that same belief but very few people are prepared to get out there and actually do it which is what makes him different because most comedians once they've got reasonably successful they're going right that's fine I'll just get the money and carry on whereas Eddie keeps on going out there and pushing further and further and further his whole thing used to be um, he wanted to be the first person to do a gig on the moon and I think a lot of people think it's quite likely that he will one day (laughs) Quite possible. I could see it happen. Probably, probably in 10, 15 years. Why not? Well, uh, t- tell us about uh, blah blah. We, we know him from how he acts uh, while, while he's on stage. We know how he reacts uh, to some uh, special questions in interviews. But, but well, uh, can, can you tell us uh, some like a funny story from, from everyday life where, where his character really comes, uh, comes into, in, into life? And, and you can maybe paint, paint us a picture about... Oh, good Lord. <laughs> you put me on the spot. I mean, is he that insane all the time? Like, he's always... No, no, insane. very he's very, very boring off, off stage. <laughs> Well, no, because I think he puts so much energy into into um, into what he does in terms of spreading the gospel of comedy across the world, really, which is genuinely how he sees it. Um, that was one of the biggest problems with shooting the documentary was that he doesn't, you know, throw TVs out hotel room windows. <laughs> he doesn't, you know, sh- drag lots of groupies to rooms and snort lots of drugs. He's actually quite, you know, you don't get those incidents that you would hope for in a normal documentary um, because, in fact, he's so focused on trying to do something that's actually considerably more um, subversive, which is actually transform people's thinking and into a much more surreal and you know uh, lateral thinking really about everything from politics to you know their own everyday lives so I think once he's done that all day there's probably not much energy left for just messing around and so it caused me a problem to try and get an interesting story because obviously those are the bits that normally you would look at and then I realized that actually what was interesting was this bizarre kind of gospel of his which is anyone can believe in themselves and do something that they didn't believe that they were capable of as long as they have that determination and they keep on going and so in the end that's what the film turned into it became a manifestation of that idea so you know that I think is probably more true to what Eddie's like in everyday life okay we, we're gonna see the movie tonight but uh, about uh, about the force majeure show can you you, you, you have seen it uh, the, the show the, he's I- been working it through yeah it's, it hasn't actually started it's just about to this it's just coming up to the very beginning now so, yeah, yeah Riga is the first show that he's doing in Force Majeure tour. The very really? first, the very yeah. first place. Yeah. He's been working it now for months and months, like in theaters. Like he's been doing, I believe, LA and New York for a couple of months now, where he'll just does two shows a night, practicing, working it, new stuff, ideas. But this is the first genuine show on this tour. So, so we can expect a lot of bootleggers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah. With, I, with, I, with if the they could buy a ticket, okay, maybe that might not Yeah, that's kind of the main, that's the main thing. <laughs> that's get the bootleggers in there, that bootleg market, that's what we're going for. Yeah, but you, you, you have been not, not, not only producer and director of, uh, of uh, the Eddie Izzard story, you have directed as well a lot of uh, DVDs of, of Eddie's. Uh, yeah, that's right. Actually, yeah, um, I just finished directing, um, he did uh, marathons in South Africa last year, so we just did... Um, a documentary about that. He didn't complete it, but um, <laughs> it was the story of Mandela, so it sort of, in a way, what, didn't really matter. What, so yeah, that was. What, what was wrong with his marathon uh, um, he, career? <laughs> after, well, he did do um, 51 in a row uh, a few years back. <laughs> Just 51. Come on, please. But, <laughs> but this time, I think it was a mixture of you know, South Africa is not for pussies. That's <laughs> a serious. I mean, it's really hard. Um, the terrain is terrible. The weather is just not like what you're used to and, and there's so much up and downhill running especially that um, I, uh, he had to stop halfway through but so what he did was he continued the journey to find Mandela and it was actually quite nice to see him for once not succeed and actually have to deal with the consequences of that so in some ways I think it actually made a better story than if he'd just done what he did before which is just keep on going So, so. when the movie's going to be out? That is coming out in uh, it's on Sky in um, May so not long two months Okay 
We're gonna wait for that. I believe the Eddie Izzard story šovakar pulksten astoņos vakarā Splendid Palace jā, mazajā zālē jums ir iespēja šo filmu noskatīties un arī sastapt Sāru Taunsen, kur šorīt viesojās Radio 120. Thank you very much, Sāra, for coming here. Pleasure. Is there anything you want to, uh, want, want to add, Louis? Uh, the, the, you're fantastically good-looking, Tom. That's what I'd like to add. <laughs> Thank you. That you're much. amazing. No, also, <laughs> Thank you very much. After Eddie Izzard, we have, we're doing another stand-up show on April 2 at uh, in Artelis we're bringing all uh, foreign comedians all going to be in English it's going to be hilarious and you can get the information for that at comedybaltics.com okay we, 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 we're going to do that Sarah last question what kind of music Eddie prefers oh gosh what, what, what he's really into <laughs> what's on his iPod do you have any idea because well, that was the thing I, I didn't ask him when, when I had the chance okay. I don't know why but, but yeah Um, oh my goodness! Oh, I, okay, I, okay. I, 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 um, that's some for that's not my bag. I don't really I, 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 know. I, I have Johnny and Mary on a playlist by Robert Palmer. That might be something. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Into it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, hope, I, I hope so. Sarah, thank you very much, and thank you, Louis. Thank you. Thanks.